Economist. Um, we are going to be talking about the intercoolers that we've set up in this room to keep it cool during the summertime. Uh, we got an air handler over there. We have an air recirculating fan over there. We're going to be cleaning this up and uh, setting it up and getting it ready for the heat here in the next few months. Um, as you can see, we do have an AC that was installed before we put this in. And uh, it doesn't necessarily fully displace the AC during the hot summer months, but it does relieve it quite a bit. So sometimes, for example, like here in April, May, and June, uh, we'll be using these intercoolers and we'll be running a lot of water through there. Um, and for that time, we, we shouldn't have to use the AC at all, but the AC will be on standby. Uh, it's set, it'll be set to 86 degrees. Um, but once the summer months come in, uh, in July and August, when it gets really hot, uh, the AC will have to kick on on and off throughout the day just to kind of help it. Um, and it's not because I can't cool it down, but because I cannot flow water constantly through these. And I'll explain why here in a minute. Uh, hopefully this year though, we will be able to just run constantly and not have to use the AC. So that's the plan. Um, don't know if it'll work, but we'll see what happens. And as always guys, if you like this type of content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Activate the post notification bell so you guys can stay up to date with all the latest videos. We have three 2000 CFN fans pulling air out, out into the attic. Um, zoom out right here. So those are the, the beta frames that we got stacked up on side. This is the back side of it. All the air comes in. It's kind of warm in here now. Uh, 77 and uh, currently we're not actually got we don't actually have any uh, water going through the coolers or the AC or anything like that uh, we're just flowing air through uh, we actually have the fans turned down so the fans aren't actually pulling the max volume that they can and I also have this open right here this is where I come in and out we're gonna be changing that as well I'm gonna take these units, I'm gonna flip them around, and uh, we're gonna take this down and uh, fully insulate it and put an actual door here so we can walk in and out whenever we need to change some fans or work on a system. But yeah, that's that's what that's how we're flowing the air through it currently. They keep the, the GPUs cold. So the idea here is, is that the water comes in through here uh, via, via irrigation goes into the system, fills up the intercoolers, and whenever it drains, it comes out of here, and it goes out that way. I'll explain this a little bit here, a little later, but basically this is just a drain that goes into the dry well, and then from the dry well, it goes. So that's the dry well right now. It's got a bunch of cobwebs and stuff because it hasn't been used, but you can see the two float switches. And then there's a pump down at the bottom. There's some dirt stuff in there. I'm gonna have to clean it out. I'm gonna have to clean it out before the beginning of the year, but uh, we're gonna try not to use it this year. So the drain comes out through there, fills up the tank. It hits the first switch, nothing happens. It hits the top switch. And when it hits the top switch, the pump turns on and it shuts off the water. Now it shuts off the water and the pump turns on and it starts feeding it. This pumps out to the waste, which goes to the front of the house. And the controller that uses, or the, the controller that turns on and off the pump and the water. So that's just the basic Arduino uh, controller. I got my shielded wires there. I got my 110 coming in. And I got my P 
power for the relays and the controller itself through here. So, and then this just plugs in to this guy right here. It's a GFCI. So this is the three ton AC unit sits in the back of the house. It's good enough for 1,500 square feet. Um, no soldering required, no charging, no vacuuming, no nothing. Uh, you essentially do it all yourself. Kit comes ready, you just plug it in and turn it on, make sure there's no leaks and run it. So this would be the unit that we're gonna be using this year to cool down the air so we can constantly be driving water into the coolers or fresh water into the coolers. And so basically the idea here is it's just like a, a nuclear power plant, how they, how they cool down their facility. Um, we shoot water in here, inside here, and what happens is um, as the water goes in, uh, a ton of air is actually going into this 55 gallon bucket. Um, we have an opening on this side. So the air is coming in through here and blowing upwards through the through these radiators and what's going on is the hot water comes in through here and then goes through all these little channels there comes out the bottom a little bit colder then it goes down to the second radiator on the bottom and it goes into the top again and so then it cools cools it down a second time and then it comes out this way and then this goes out to the cooler so the idea is basically to cool down the water before it goes back into the server room. So the way the system works is the heat that comes off of these units gets sucked through that box in the back and shot out the, the, the ceiling with the fans that we showed previously. And uh, any remaining heat that gets left on this side of the room basically gets sucked out of this vent right here and there's a thermostat up there and whenever the thermostat up there reaches a certain level, depending on what I set it to, so I, I believe I set it to about 85 degrees during the summer. Um, so it's 85 degrees and if it hits above 85, then that thermostat sends a signal to the controller over here. And then it says, okay, if it's above 85 and the temperature in the cooler is above a certain temperature, then go ahead and turn on and then on top of that the other part of the logic is is that the in the in the dry well we have the float switches like i showed you a minute ago and uh it, if the dry well is okay like if it's low enough it'll turn on but if there's too much water in the dry well it will keep the, the coolers from turning on so uh water will not come into the coolers to cool down the room until until the dry well is empty or below a certain level and so here's where the water would come in you come in through here and uh, go down here and here's a pressure gauge that actually broke this winter time I'm gonna have to go through all of this and replace a lot of the hoses and the pipes and that but it's not too bad for running for about three years now um, and this is broken too but the water would come in through here and it would push the heat up and basically evacuate the heat from the intercoolers because heat rises of course and so once the heat was evacuated from the coolers uh, they would cool down and uh, I got a little vent valve right here because we got water coming down this way so when I shut off the water um, the weight of the water here would create a vacuum in the intercooler so I would use that that pressure relief valve to allow air to come into the pipe so that it doesn't create a vacuum and uh, the, the other part was is this uh, I actually set up this ther thermal thermal coupler to, to this controller as well and uh, what we were using it is we were just kind of testing to see how we were gonna do it Cause, you know again it, it's, it's all a test we didn't we don't know exactly how it was gonna work and it's, it's, it's a continuous improvement that we're doing um, we'd use this 
this thermocoupler controller here, this temp controller, um, to essentially say, okay, the AC is on, and so now we can go ahead and fire up the, the water to replace the water here. And so the AC would kick on at the same time with the coolers, and that would kind of help a little bit, but once it got really hot, uh, when, it was, when we were above uh, 110 degrees, uh, 110 degrees, 108 degrees, 105, it, it would really kind of hinder us because we would kind of uh, pull a lot of power. So what we did or what we ended up doing is we just left this guy on standby at 85 degrees or 80, yeah, 85 degrees. We leave that at 85 degrees. And this one, we had the room set at 85 up or at the ceiling. And if it exceeded that point, then the coolers would turn on. And if the coolers couldn't take the load, then the AC would kick on as well. But for the most part, if we remained under 90 degrees, the, the the AC would never have to kick on. And so that was the biggest the biggest help right there because the AC can pull up to, uh, I believe it was 4,000 watts. So it, we, we just wanted to kind of keep it uh, off as much as we could. Uh, the good thing about this AC though, it was it is an inverter duty compressor. So because of that, when it does fire up, it actually ramps up slowly, so it'd be like one amp, one and a half amp, or one and a quarter amp, two amps, three amps, little by little, until it got to the point where it was full bore. Um, but for the most part, what would happen is if it ever needed help, especially like in the 110 degree weather, uh, the coolers would turn on, and then once the once the coolers were on and the and the air couldn't come down uh, to the to the level that we needed the AC would start ramping up and it would go like one amp, two amp, three amps. And by the time it got to about four amps, four and a half amps, uh, the AC would have to, would essentially shut off because it no longer needed, uh, the room no longer needed any assistance because the coolers were able to take off the rest of the load until it needed an, a, another cycle. And so that's what it was doing. We were just cycling through the water um, and then just dumping it to the dry well and then from the dry well it was dumping out, out to the waste. But yeah, that's how this thing works. Um, it's, it's, it's a test, it's, 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 a, it's a progress, it's a project in progress. Uh, we're hoping to get away from using the AC altogether this year. Um, don't know if we're gonna be able to, but uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will. So just to kind of recap a little bit on the uh, water cooling tower that we've got going on, um, the hot water from the from the mining room would be going into here and we would be using spray jet nozzles uh, to spray the water coming in over the radiator on the bottom. While that's going on, there is air interacting with the water that is going downward and it causing it to evaporate. The process is actually causing the water to cool down and all of the heat will be going upward. And so as this is happening, the water that lands on the bottom or on the basin, cold water basin, basically gets is, is colder. It's the, co it's the coldest water in the system. On top of that, any water droplets that do escape from this process, there will be some vapor going upward. And as that's happening, this second cooler would have a second go at the water vapor that is escaping from the system. And of course, the hottest, the hottest air would be coming out here. We've tried this during the summer last year where we were running a system and it was about 98 degrees outside. And we had the system in the shade, of course, because we don't want the sun to be hitting it directly, but we did leave it outside for a few hours just so that the water gets to the ambient temperature of the day. It would actually cool down the water down to about 66 degrees in the shade. So. That's the whole idea. Basically dropping the water down to about 65, 66 degrees and then sending that back into the uh, into the mining room and then cooling down the room and then the heat that comes out of that room goes back into this cooling tower and then has another go at it. We will be adding more things to it. I have a couple more ideas that I want to do. I want to superheat the water coming in um, and then when the water comes out from, from the basin back into the, uh, to the system, we want to uh, essentially cool it a second time. So that's going to be something that's going to be a work in progress. Um, but I believe that for just na for now, for this year, what we're going to do is just we're going to have it just like a regular nuclear tower or nuclear cooling tower setup. 
All right, guys, that about does it for today. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Activate the post notification bell so you guys can stay up to date on this project we got going. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, leave them down below so that we can address those in a future update. See you next time. Bye.